Hi guys, we're back at Smash Fishing. About to tuck into a nice sausage roll. We're heading out after the lobsters and the abalone. It's the last three days of the year now. Uh, it's today, tomorrow, and the next day, and then it's banned for the rest of the year. So hopefully we can do do well with some big lobsters or maybe even some abalone. So stay tuned. It's Smash Fishing, baby. Woo! Finally, we are down the beach. It was such a beautiful day. I had a nice slow ride all the way here. And as you can see, that tide isn't all the way down yet. We've still got two hours of the drop. So uh, we've come at the perfect time to try and catch the lobsters out. Fingers crossed, we can get a nice big keeper. Some really cool looking sea sponges there. I'm not sure what the name is. That's quite interesting. While the tide's still low guys, I'm just working my way through the puddles to see if I can pick up a sneaky orma. Haha, there's a lot more weed about at the moment. Roll on summer. You can see how fast that tide's whipping out. It's amazing on these big tides because it's such a flat sort of area. It just whooshes out in no time. That's why it's good to get here early because uh, the lobsters have no chance of outrunning this. It is moving at some knots. Could have done with my uh, my sun hat today. I am absolutely sweating out. <laughs> Tide's still a bit high yet to try and find the lobsters, but uh, it's not close. We're gonna get to the hole soon. Come on, feeling lucky today. You ain't gonna believe this, guys. The one thing I've always wanted to find, if you can see there, look at that giant tentacle. Oh my God. <laughs> I'm gonna put the camera down and we'll get him out. Ah, oh, come on. I am so excited for this. I have never foraged a uh, big, never even foraged a octopus in my life. Whoa. Look at the size of that. Oh my God, that there is one huge octopus. Oh my God. Oh, look at the size of that. Check that out guys. Oh my God. I have never found an octopus before, but look at the size of that. That is huge. Oh my God, that is massive. Look at the way it moves. <laughs> oh my God, it's massive. Oh, we got to get some underwater footage of this. What an absolute beast. Look at that, guys. That is one hell of an octopus. That is one big octopus right there. That's a big old Guernsey octopus. Ugh. Trying to hold him up for you to give you a show. But look at that. That is a huge octopus. Big old gnashes on it, that's for sure. What a, what a beast sticking to me. <laughs> All right, what a donkey. Let's get it released. There you go guys, 
one last show of this beast. I'm going to throw it into the water. Just so then it'll swim its way out, hide, hide somewhere. And that is a crab's nightmare, that thing. Otherwise, it's just going to dry out around here. That's the first ever octopus I've ever, ever found. I am absolutely buzzing with that. Woohoo! Oh, I'll tell you what, though, guys. Octopus are quite intimidating when they're in the holes. They like stick to the roof of the hole, so I had to get my hand behind it because I didn't want to break it. I did punch his, uh, his leg, but um, it'll be fine. It's only a little leg wound, but um, I can't believe that. I've never found an octopus before, and that was huge. That must have weighed about six, seven pounds, that octopus. What an absolute beast. We're coming up to some lobster holes now. Roll on those lobsters. <laughs> Oh, there's a lobster. Come on, I'm just trying to push him out from the back. Looks a good one. Come on, bud. Where is he? Gotcha! Oh, that's going to be close. Come on. <laughs> we are on a roll today. I don't want him to pinch me. What a beast, come on. You beauty, you found a bigger, I can't believe that octopus. That is ridiculous. Come on, let go. Uh, I just want to measure you. Right, you eat that then. I'm gonna see if this one's legal. And it is. There we go, we got a keeper lobster, baby. Woohoo! Hell yeah, come on, get off. I can't believe that, we found a big old octopus and now we've got a big old lobster. That one was in about three millimeters. Happy days. I haven't got any bands with me, so I might have to tape up its claws. <laughs> ah, gotcha. There we go. One claw down. Luckily, I've got a bit of electrical tape with me. I always carry this for cuts or anything, really. It's always handy to have with you. This is a perfect lobster for a nice cook-up. I can't believe we found the octopus, man. Beautiful. One decent lobster down. Let's go get some more, baby. Hell yeah. <laughs> we are on an absolute roll at the moment. We've only checked three lobster holes. We've got one lobster and one giant octopus. <laughs> I'm amazed at that octopus. I've never found one before in my life. I got a big cheesy grin on the guy. Oh, what an amazing day so far. Hopefully we can find some more. Look at that, guys. Got an armor just here. You beauty. I don't know if she's in. She was on the rock really light. Nah, she's just out. Put it back there. She'll work her way back. We're at the next hole. Come on. Show me some lobsters. Yeah, there's definitely something in here. It's a big lobster, guys. What I'm doing is I'm pushing one side of the hole to the other, and I'm just slowly working it out until I can find its tail and then I hook its tail and slowly drag it out. Gotcha. There we go, guys. Look at that for a male lobster. Solid as well. That's what you call a lobster right there. <laughs> Look at the size of that. That's about a two pound lobster, that. That's one's going straight in the cook pot. So we're two lobsters down now, one giant octopus. This is heading for one of the best foragers on the channel by a long shot. <laughs> Just wish I brought some lobster bands. I won't be keeping any more lobsters now. Two is all I need. And this one I'm going to munch on for sure.
Beauty. Another lobster down, we'll get it in the bag. Hopefully we'll find a few more bits. I'm gonna start looking for some almonds soon because uh, we've got enough lobster, that's for sure. It's a hot day, so I'm gonna be putting some weed in this bag to keep them alive for a bit. All right, let's get them. So you can see guys, just got some old seaweed here. And if I stick that in the foraging bag, it keeps the sun off the lobsters and it'll keep them nice and fresh. So we've still got a couple of hours of foraging to do yet. So hopefully we can get lucky with some more stuff. Seems like that tide's going out a lot further than what, what they gave. I think it's down to the high pressure. When you've got nice, nice sunny, sunny weather, it brings the high pressure and pushes the tide down lower. That's always a good sign. This crab's been caught out by the tide. <laughs> Get you in the water, mate. She ain't gonna last long out there. It's hot today. Look at that water. It's like paradise. There's a little almond just sitting there. Just going along in these really big holes. Just hoping for like a big brown crab or something to be lurking around there. So clear. It's amazing. Something in this hole, guys. going to push it like before from one side of the hole to the other and you can sort of you can work them out here he comes boom <laughs> oh look at that lovely sized lobster there but check this out lovely buried lobster as well that's why you never rake them out the holes if you push one side you can just slowly prise them out and then they walk out and that's why you don't want to wreck them you don't want to damage a big female like that that is a beautiful lobster prime lobster that one oh i'm sorry missus you're a, you're a fine specimen you're going back <laughs> gonna put her back in her hole there you go back she goes straight into her little home it's always great to see the big females like that. That's what you want. That's the stocks right there. Hopefully we can find some more. Hello. How are you, eh? What a beautiful dog. Look at that for a beast. <laughs> oh, these are really pretty. These are called the Star Ascidian. You can see it's purple. It's got loads of little stars in it. There's some little bean sea squirts, I think those are called. Awesome little creatures. We are on the move. We've walked quite a long way now. I'm absolutely sweating. I'm trying to find some ormers, but I'm not finding any. So I might just run to the lobster holes and hope for the best. Really interesting thing about today is we, were, we haven't found any really small ones. It's all just been really big ones. It's that time of year, springtime. They're all coming right into shore. And they're coming to either molt or breed. So uh, you tend to find a lot more keepers, you know. Just hopefully all this long old walk pays off because I am sweating. Look at all the mullet. They are absolutely everywhere. I hope you can see that. There's just hundreds of baby mullet just swimming around everywhere. Great to see. I've got a couple of really good ormers here, guys. Look at that what we're looking for nice size one there I can see another one just here there we go beauties that's definite keepers I think yep that one's definitely in that's a beauty that one two armors down no more under there that was a good little find that Haliotis tubercolata is the Latin name for this green armor or abalone we call them ormas over here they're a delicacy beauty hopefully i can find a few more get some for my dad i don't know if you can see in there there's ormas there right at the back there's all along the back there there's ormas and one baby conga <laughs> all the sea slugs look at that those are called sea hairs you can tell by the two big ears on it look at that and these give off a really purple dye in the water. Awesome. I'm going to go put those back in the water because they shouldn't be in the sunlight. Might get a tan like I've got today. 
Look at that. Tiny little black headed goby. Look, can't outrun the tide. I think that's called a black headed goby. Orange with the really black head. But look at that, as dead as a dodo, that. That's why when there's really big tides and big heat, anything that's, uh, anything that's caught out is not gonna last very long. It's a half decent brown crab there. Look at that, a lovely sized crab. You don't wanna get bitten by this thing. It's a female, you can tell by the circular apron there. Nice sized crab, definitely not legal I don't think. Got my gauge. Oh, that is legal. <laughs> that's a that's a perfectly legal sized crab though. It looks tiny. I think it's because it's because because it's a female, it's got small claws, so it makes it look smaller. But that there is literally dead on the legal size limit. Look at that. But I'm not gonna be eating that. It's a female crab as well. We don't usually eat the females. So she can go back. Go on then, sweetheart. What I'm going to do guys, I've got my two lobsters and what I'm going to do is I'm going to let these abalone go, There's, I've only got two of them and that tide's really starting to push in now, so beautiful, I'm going to let these abalone go, put them in a crack of the rock and then they're there for another day, uh, two lobsters is more than enough for what I need, it's even that one, but they've been out of the water for a while now, otherwise I would release the female but it's fine, nothing will get wasted. A nice big rock down here guys so what i'm gonna do i'm just gonna put them down here there we go we're still right on the low water edge we're still right on the low water edge so uh they can work their way under the rocks i've got my feed and then uh, we've done our good deed of putting stuff back and we even found a jumbosaur octopus <laughs> as always guys make sure you're very aware of what that tide's doing i'll show you guys this here was dry when i was walking here and now the water's come all the way up it can cut you off so fast especially on the big tides so always make sure you know what time low water is and uh, how you're getting off the rocks that you're on safety is very important because uh, you can end up drowning ah. nice size clam there really big one bury him down a little bit make him safe it's always interesting just having a little ganders along the beaches. You never know what you're going to see. I'm at my mum's house at the moment, guys, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to boil both of these lobsters because I'm going to give Sam the female one and I'm going to eat the other one. So uh, it makes sense just to quickly boil them up here and we're ready to go. We got some cracking lobsters today. Nice big male there. Small female. Perfect eating size. And me and Sam are both going to be eating good. Sam will be happy with this because he's been working lately so uh, he can't come foraging. So he can enjoy a nice big lobster. Both of these lobsters have been dispatched now. It's just where the cross is on the top of the head here. You go straight down and out towards the head. And what that does is shut them off instantly. And then uh, there's no thrashing around in the boiling water. And then there's no suffering for the lobsters. So what I'm gonna do is just plop these in there now. That, that water is straight out of the kettle. I'm gonna give these a good six minute boil. There we go guys, two delicious lobsters. Decided I'm gonna leave Sam the big one because I'm foraging the next two days so I'm happy just to eat the little one. So I'm gonna sit down at the table, and munch this. Oh, I've been looking forward to this. Nice old lobster to munch on. Can't believe today's forage, that was absolutely epic. Uh, I've always wanted to find an octopus but never been lucky enough until today. And to find one that size as well. I can't believe how big that thing was. I've never seen nothing like it. It's 
solid lobsters, these ones. Oh yeah, big old chunk of lobster, look at that. Oh, you can't beat that. Take that feather out. It was kind of, it was really awkward to get that, that octopus out of the hole. What I had to do is get my hook behind it and then run my hand down to take the tentacles off the rocks because it like suctions itself to the rocks so it's almost impossible to get out. So next time, I think for now on when I'm foraging, I'm gonna bring some gloves. So then if I ever find one again, I can run my hands down and pull it out with my hands. So it was a nightmare. I was like trying to hold it with the hook and then get round it with my hand and it, oh, it was a nightmare. I was worried about getting nipped because uh, they've got huge beaks, octopus, for crushing up crabs and stuff like that. That thing would probably eat lobsters. So you gotta be careful. But it was definitely a learning curve. I've never ever found an octopus before, so if I find one again, I'll definitely be a bit more prepared. Oh yeah, look at that meat coming out. Big chunk. Can't beat a fresh lobster. I'm gonna pick the legs as well on this. I'm absolutely starving. I've caught the sun today, I can feel it on my face. But hey, definitely a worth <laughs> worth the ride all the way. I probably rode about three miles around the island to go to that spot. I'm so glad I did. A bit of a learning curve getting an octopus out of the hole. And uh, it's the first time ever seeing one. I am absolutely over the moon with that. So stay tuned for the next episode. If you like the video, make sure to subscribe and hit the like button. If you want any merch or, or you're thinking about becoming a member, the link's in the description. It's smash fishing, baby. Woo! Mmm.